I'm uh, Slava. Uh, in Yandex, I work on our personal assistant, Alice. So my team works on all the NLU stuff. So all the natural and uh, natural language understanding that happens in our personal assistants, like uh, is being developed in our team. So that means we like work on su such stuff as text classific uh, intent classification, semantic parsing, semantic tagging, like dialogue managing, like all the stuff that needs to uh, that's required to for like personal things to understand you and to make a decision, like what to perform next. So and my talk will be about very important part of our, per uh, of our personal assistant general conversation uh, dialogue system. So that's an overview. Like my main goal is like to introduce you to the field of general conversation model conversation models. Uh, like give some insights how to use cat boost or gradient boosting in this field, dominated heavily by deep learning models, and uh, like give some inspiration. Like even. After we decided to add some deep reinforcement learning for our system, we still find a use for cut boost. Uh, and also, I'll try to show you some like uh, interesting samples from our models, just to like keep you interested. So the first part: uh, voice assistance and Alice. So voice assistance is a quickly emerging field, so it's booming right now. Uh, that's uh, programs that implement dialogue interface. So what's dialogue interface? <coughs> dialogue, a program has a dialogue inter interface if you interact with it in the form of a dialogue. So you, uh, the input is like text queries or voice queries. The system tracks your state and tries to solve your problem like in the form of a dialogue. Uh, why, uh, why do we need personal assistance or voice, voice assistance? Because it's really easy, because uh, humans are really good at dialogues. There is no need to, uh, to teach someone how to use dialogue interface. Everybody solves their everyday tasks in the form of the dialogue. And it could be really efficient, because uh, everybody uh, could imagine a dialogue, a simple dialogue that uh, results in uh, booking a, a, rest, uh, a table in a restaurant or uh, even arranging your vacation but try to imagine like a sequence of actions with a uh, graphical interface uh, with all the sites, uh, websites required like for booking restaurant or like uh, renting uh, hotels and such. So why uh, personal assistants are booming right now? Because uh, all the required component, uh, components started to work really well. So speech recognition is really good right now so thanks to deep learning. Uh, speech uh, uh, generated speech is also like really human like thanks to deep learning and uh, there were uh, also major advances in natural language processing mainly thanks uh, to deep learning uh, stuff like uh, uh, it all uh, it, it all started with word to work and now it's uh, more uh, bird yeah everybody who knows what bird is uh, yes so yeah, BERT uh, like, uh, simplifies all the NLU tasks even further. Uh, but uh, still we are really far from uh, replacing a human assistant because we, we still have like uh, a long way to go. Mainly because we don't have a large data set of dialogue interactions that's, that's required for all the models we want to train. So Yandex has its own personal assistant. Uh, her name is Alice. Um, uh, it's, uh, she launched uh, two years ago uh, in a mobile app, and now uh, we have our own smart speakers. A big smart speaker launched uh, a year or so ago, or maybe a little bit more, and uh, a smaller one. So they're called Yandex Station and Yandex Station uh, Mini. So, um, uh, Alice, so what? Despite uh, her, uh, her young age, Alice is uh, like uh, really capable. So she's uh, able to search uh, the internet because Yandex is a search company. And that's uh, our main. Uh, that's our main field. 
It was able to tell you news, search for organizations, tell you weather. She knows uh, how to show routes and to know when to expect traffic jams. She can uh, also like uh, play music, search for films. You could uh, interact with your smart home devices through Alice um, and like uh, uh, lots of other stuff. And also she is able to converse on a wide range of topics. So why we think that uh, this last thing is important? Why uh, we need our personal assistant to be able, um, uh, why we want our personal assistant to be able to converse on like wide range of topics? Because uh, there are some uh, researches, uh, research um, um, results that um, like if uh, that uh, users uh, that uh, firstly it's lead to mo more human like experience uh, you do not expect some like uh, robotic commands as input or robotic commands as outputs uh, it increases users uh, retention they tend to experiment with Alice they tend to come back to her try different st things try things that might work si things that might not work and also it's uh, really fun because uh, uh, it's a fun uh, feature for users because when we launched, we have uh, like lots of publicity with memes uh, spreading the internet with uh, fun, uh, fun dialogues. And uh, it's a really cool project to work uh, on because it's really close to like solving general intelligence in some way because a good general conversation system could, I don't know, solve logical puzzles. It could, uh, uh, it should like, uh, set its own goals in the conversations, track if she's completed them or not. So, um, so how to train your own general conversation system? So first you need a data set uh, and there is no surprise, uh, you need to find data sets of human to human dialects. It's a hard task to do, but and the data is scarce, but uh, whatever you find, just throw in your model and hope it will it it will like get the best from those dialogues. So these dialogues could come from social networks, subtitles from movies. So open subtitles has a huge data set of all the subtitles uh, in one file. Their direct speech from uh, books. Um, uh, there are also screenplays available online. All or like any dialogue would uh, uh, would go. Also, there are like uh, subtitles from uh, South Park available, like on, on uh, like fun size. So you could uh, train your own, uh, like Cartman, as I did like several years ago. Um, and how to train your model? So uh, the state of the art is just to predict the next utterance. You have a context of a dialogue. It's several um, several utterances, and you need to come up with the next one. Um, so you know language modeling. In language modeling, we predict the next word. That's just pretty much the same stuff, but we predict the, predict the next sentence. So there are two main approaches to this task. One is called generative models, so sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. Uh, this approach borrows results from machine translation. Basically, it tries to translate uh, context of the dialogue to uh, our response. So, uh, and, it, and it does so uh, in a, like word by word uh, via Markov uh, process. Mm -hmm. So it's an autoregressive model. It has uh, and, and generates words by word, uh, generates uh, sentences word by word or sub token by sub token uh, to be more exact. So there, uh, here's a, an example of a joke generated by uh, our model. I, um, I translated it uh, to, to the best of my uh, language, uh, in, in English language uh, capabilities. So in a mental hospital, the lines are crazy long. <coughs> yeah, I think it, in Russian it was better, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so it could, uh, could produce some brand new uh, utterances that uh, uh, nobody's seen before. 
Uh, that's the main uh, advantage of this model, and also that's the main disadvantage of this model, because uh, some utterances could come out uh, ungrammatical or offensive. Um, another type of model uh, uh, doesn't uh, have these problems. Uh, another type of uh, models are selective models. Selective models, uh, when we use selective approach, we uh, we think that all all the sentences that we'll ever need were already written. So we uh, like make a database of all the responses we'll ever plan to use and train a similarity function of uh, context of our dialogue to the uh, to the utterance we will uh, use in the, in a conversation. So uh, and we'll try to train the similarity function in a way that uh, replies that makes sense uh, as a like continuation of the dialogues would get a high score and replies that doesn't make sense uh, would get a low score. And then after you have such, uh, such a model, you, you could just uh, like look through all of the database of your responses and select the most, uh, the ones with the highest score. Like if, you, if we are applying neural nets uh, for this problem, the usual architecture looks as follows. You have one tower uh, or one set of parameters that takes context as an input and embeds it in a like fixed dimensional vector. And you have another tower that takes uh, response uh, as an input and uh, embeds it in the same space, semantic space. And you try and the score function usually is just uh, dot product or cosine similarity be be between these two vectors. And we try to uh, train these two models in such a way that uh, like uh, sim uh, that responses that make sense as a continuation of the dialogues get a high score and others do not. So this one's uh, really uh, much easier to train, they are faster to apply, uh, you could limit them to like good and grammatically correct responses, uh, like delete all the bad words and such. Um, so, but after you have all these models, uh, you, it's, uh, when you have all these models, uh, an optical, uh, you need a way to combine them. To, you need a way to select uh, to select the appropriate model at the appropriate time, and the best model, uh, the best way to do so, uh, was to use CatBoost for that problem. So you get a context of a dialogue, you collect candidate replies from all the models you've got. Some of them could be selective, some of them could be generative. You like uh, you do some feature engineering. S uh, throw this uh, replies to CatBoost and, you, and CatBoost produces the final ranking. So a little bit more details. So candidate models could be selective models, they could be different models, different uh, uh, data sets, uh, uh, databases of replies, uh, generative models, so this one's uh, uh, generate like yeah, replies on the fly. What features do, do, you need, uh, do we use? Um, basically, you need to come up with, a fe with features that allow you to compare replies from different sources. Sources as different as like selective models and generative ones. So generative model come up with replies that nobody have seen before. You do not have any like historical data for it, any statistics, nothing. And uh, for uh, Selective models, you actually ca can have like lots of uh, statistical data, like uh, how often uh, this reply uh, turns out to be natural, uh, how frequent this reply and how data set and such. So, um, so you try to engineer features that uh, would be useful to compare like a reply from different sources. Such features could be just basic text features are great. So number of words, like text intersections, everything, uh, everything that uh, you 
uh, is that you'll come out with in the first like 10 minutes of uh, feature engineering text features, uh, throw that in. So similarity scores from your selective models, even though this selective model was trained to, uh, trained to, even though the main usage of this model is to search through large, large dat database of responses, we can still use this model to, uh, to produce meaningful features, even for selective models, or even for generative models. Likelihood from generative models, and one of the important features is a categorical feature. The source of the model, uh, the source of the uh, reply, the identifier of a source model for for each reply. This feature helps Catboss to make some non-trivial uh, non-trivial rules. For instance, uh, if uh, the similarity scores are really good, that means I could rely on uh, uh, on replies from selective models. Or if similarity scores are, are not that great, maybe that's uh, an opportunity for a generative model to like jump jump in and uh, like produce some uh, utterance that uh, uh, that, you, that the selective model wasn't able to find in the database. Um, and you train this cat burst on some, uh, ideally on something that you want to optimize on your uh, keep, uh, keep, uh, KPI metric or something. Uh, we train cat burst on human labels. It uh, could be infeasible to train this uh, deep learning models on human labels. They require like millions or hundreds of millions of uh, sentences. Uh, to start producing something meaningful. But CatBoost, tens of thousands labels, uh, hundreds of thousands labels, and you're good to go. You, you'll be much better at, this, uh, at predicting this human label than all these uh, deep learning models that haven't seen any human label at the, type of, uh, at the time of training. And we use ranking laws, so we basically try to select with the, uh, the most n natural response, the most coherent one, but uh, when there are several coherent ones, we try to select the most, uh, the least offensive one, because being offensive could be a problem, uh, and uh, the most engaged one, and so forth. So, and I'll tell you about uh, our recent experiment. So, um, Predicting the next response uh, has its own limitations. So uh, if we are just optimizing this logical coherence, uh, we could uh, start to produce general answers. We could uh, produce dialogues that are really boring. Uh, and there is no information about keeping, talking, uh, keeping topic in such models. So uh, okay, I'll, I, I guess I'll need to read some. So, Alice, what should I do to make you better understand me? Do whatever you want. You don't. You don't care, do you? I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one who doesn't care. So, um, that's uh, an example of a kind of non-engaging model. So, uh, in order to like. Uh, fight these limitations, uh, we need to start optimizing uh, the dialogue as a whole. We could try to optimize for longer dialogues, we could try to optimize for more uh, informative dialogues, more engaging ones, we try to maximize user satisfaction or uh, like minimize user dissatisfaction. Um, and we can do so uh, by slightly moving our uh, current model that produces natural responses to a new point that also tries to maximize uh, this dialogue engagedness. So, uh, I'll tell you about uh, reinforcement learning in like two minutes, in the one. <laughs> so, uh, in reinforcement learning, uh, there is an agent who interacts with environment. In each state of, uh, of the environment, it tries to perform different actions. Uh, for some of the actions, agent uh, observe reward. And agent, agent uh, learns to uh, interact with the environment in such a way that maximizes the reward. 
So in our problem, agent is a chatbot or a general conversation system. Environment is another speaker. And each uh, states are just context of the dialects. And uh, our actions are different utterances that uh, could be a continuation of a dialogue. So uh, reward just could be just uh, another utterance from a speaker or dialogue termination if uh, our, our utterance wasn't that successful. And uh, maximizing the, the rewards then means maximizing the length of the dialogue. And the most surprising thing is that it's possible to train such, uh, try, uh, to, to train such agent while uh, this agent is talking uh, to itself. Because uh, we trained our agent for like a really long time to be naturally, to produce natural responses, to, pro to produce logically coherent responses. And after this, uh, some time, it became quite a good simulator for uh, a human being. So uh, if you sample dialogues uh, from this model, they would, be, they would look quite natural. So it uh, would make sense to use the model itself as a simulator for yourself. So we, we did exactly uh, that. So we, uh, we made our model talk to itself on a, like, a cluster of uh, uh, like several machines. And uh, when it talked to itself, it tried to make all the dialogues uh, longer, more engaging, more, uh, more less repetitive. So at the start of the training, uh, you can see that the model, uh, that's the, uh, the dialogue the model produced at the start of the training. Like, that's the start, uh, the seed, like the start in the utterance. And after that, we like roll, uh, roll out uh, the dialogue. Like, do you like kittens? Yes, why? Just asking. How not to like them? Yep, sure. Hooray, we came to an agreement. Yes, I'm really happy with that. And I'm happy that you are happy. Let's be happy together. <laughs> of course we will. This is the way it's meant to be. You're absolutely right. Yes, I'm always right. And uh, actually, most of our models uh, uh, tend to fall in this like never-ended cycle of, uh, uh, of uh, yeah, yeah, of endorsing each other, like uh, of. Uh, uh, saying uh, thanks to each other, uh, and uh, after the training, when the model like tra trained for several days to uh, make the dialogues less repetitive, uh, that's the dialogue we got like from the first sample. So, do you like kittens? Yes. Do you like them too? Yes. They're so cute. They're so soft and fluffy, just like kittens. <laughs> I'm so tempted to cuddle with them. What stops you from doing this? Job and exams. Yeah, well, those are sacred. Oh, you don't say. Do you have days off? Yes, today is the last day. I wish you to spend it productively. So uh, the dialogue became, maybe, maybe after that re uh, utterance, they started to like thank each other again, but we'll <laughs> never know. <laughs> uh, but, so, uh, so we managed to, like, to, uh, to keep um, more engaging dialogue for longer. Uh, then we used this, that model uh, and deployed it to production for, to, um, for, um, to talk with real users. We did so by like, basically combining the, this model with our uh, local policy. So this policy, our cat boost, was trained to optimize this uh, coherence, uh, not offensiveness, and things like that. And this, uh, this model was trained to, uh, this model is nearsighted, so it's like really myopic. It, it just tries to make things happen, in, uh, in the, uh, make things look good in the next step. And this thing uh, is farsighted. It tries to make things uh, good in a like, longer horizon. So we combined them pretty much in that way and dialogues with real users became like much, much longer, much more engaging. So that's uh, bas basically that's it. I hope, uh, hope you like this talk. Uh, thank you.
So, yes. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is when you were talking about, uh, about similarities between, uh, between two sequences, uh, so the final vectors that have trained, do they preserve some information about what, what is the, uh, the casual inference? So it can understand what was the actual question or the first sequence of the, the tokens just had to be the question and the answer. So well, you don't have this information in this vector. And the second question is, um, actually I forgot what the second question is. <laughs> so the first one, um, um, could, could, you, could you rephrase it a little bit? Well, you have told that you essentially you want to train these vectors, right? Yes. So you're training them, and after that, they have a, they have certain similarity. But whether you can actually say that the low memory was the first sequence and the high dialing was the second, second one, does does the model keep this this uh, information? Um, so I'll try to give a little bit more details and. Uh, see if it answers your question. So these two uh, towers, these two parts of the model uh, are different ones. They do not share parameters and that, that uh, turned out to, be, to give better results in, our, in all our experiments. Moreover, this, this guy uh, could take several utterances, so the context of the dialogue as an input, while this one only takes one utterance, so reply. So the model is not symmetri symmetrical. So it's it uh, one one tower uh, takes context of the dialog as an input, another like reply. Um, after 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 the training, uh, it doesn't uh, if it if if there is no overfitting, it doesn't remember which reply like was exactly suited to which context, uh, but. Uh, but all the replies that the model thinks that are suitable for that context uh, look pretty reasonable. Um, does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember the second question. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, do, do you use the actual ASR deep learning models in production? Do you have other models in production? Uh, so on this first step, like our... Uh, uh, if, it's, if it's used in production, then, then which, which one? Okay, yeah, we, we definitely use, uh, so this thing happens like before my, uh, before my team starts to, uh, starts to play like uh, the role in the pipeline. So this, uh, our team gets a text as an input, but our, uh, my colleagues work on this thing and we use end-to-end uh, -end ISR right now in production. So we, uh, like um, currently we use mostly uh, CNN ar like architecture similar to what Facebook did. If you know, we, like Facebook has uh, an end-to-end -end ISR uh, open sourced and we, our best models look kind of similar to that. We have uh, another experiments with uh, transformer-like architectures and such, but they're still uh, ongoing. So our best ASR comes from deep uh, learning architectures, yes. yes. I also have a question, but I don't know. Um, so um, a quick selfish non-technical question. Okay. Uh, when you ask a listener to play a song, if it's uh, not a Russian song, then it always matches it to a similar sounding Russian song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, is, there, is there any plan to integrate our language into the... Yeah, yeah, that's how the ASR works. Uh, so. Um, it uh, no, it's it's it's. Uh, of course, our main focus is on uh, Russian language, but ASR like did a lot of work in order to start to recognize all the songs, all the crazy s songs on uh, y Yandex Music that uh, that people are asking for. Maybe it's not uh, very good with accents, or maybe it's still not good with. Uh, French songs or uh, German songs or uh, stuff like that, but we are like they're moving in the direction of covering like all the possible songs that uh, Alice is able to play. And the second question: You said you're using ranking losses. 
Yes. But uh, you're only ever displaying one option for the user. So you never really know, you're not showing a user five options and he never chooses the third one. So you yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have a, like, I have an easy answer for that. Uh, it's not a problem right now for us because we, um, it's really hard to get a meaningful feedback from the user when you, there is no such thing as click in, uh, in personal assistance. There is, they do not click on the results you're presenting to them. You kind of give them that, an answer and hope that it's correct. Uh, you, uh, it's, you can try to figure, to figure out whether the answer was actually correct or not by user behavior, behavior after your response, but it's a tricky, question, uh, a, a tricky problem to solve. And uh, in like our general conversation models, uh, we are still uh, like experimenting with that. There is no clear way of telling whether your reply was successful or not. So as you're not using uh, like, um, as we are not using a user feedback at that point, so there is, that's not a problem. When we start to use that, for sure, could be a problem. Um, but you always could get some negative um, with usual techniques like so negative sampling and such. You ask if he wants to rank five uh, responses? Uh, yeah, for cat boost, for cat boost, we use human labels and uh, we actually mark. Uh, is that we ask for labels for several different candidates for each uh, context so that the model could learn to rank them. Do you also try to account for the user's personality when you're asking, uh, when you're uh, choosing an answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, in, in um, these general conversation models are personalized by uh, they're personalized like from the beginning so, uh, so as because uh, the longer the context the more personalized the answer is so we do not use some um, really long term features but uh, in these general conversation models you could uh, observe the behavior that if you are being rude to it if you are talk, uh, if you are root to a model, then it kind of starts to like talk back. Uh, if you are really nice to to, uh, to it, it's sh she is uh, like trying to be nice to you to you as well. So it, it's per personalized in that way, but not uh, in a way that uh, the model is different for each user. But in different scenarios, in um, not in general conversation, for example, in music. Uh, Alice is personalized, so when you ask for music, it tries to predict the most suitable song for you. So some of the scenarios are personalized, like in a general sense, uh, some of them are kind of not. <laughs> okay.